Hey guys, in this video, I want to go ahead and walk you through the example project for the new attachment system that's up on the marketplace. Now, this is the same attachment system that's in the Ultimate Multiplayer FPS framework. It's used to drive that, so I just want to make that clear. Now, this is the example project. It's in UE4 just because I support UE4. All future tutorials and stuff like that will actually be done in UE5. So this is, again, that's only because I support UE4 until 5.2 of the engine releases. Because at that point, as far as I'm aware anyways, all UE4 stuff just gets dropped from the marketplace. Well, it'll still be there, but we can't submit updates and stuff like that to it. Now, inside the uh, content folder here, we have our SKG attachment folder that contains everything for the plugin. Now, assets, we have stuff for the mannequin, stuff for the firearm, so all of its attachments, the firearm mesh. Now, same deal with the mannequin. We have our example level, which is what we're in. And we have our blueprints folder. Now, starting from, I guess, the left and working our way to the right, we have our character. Now the character is basically, it's its own character here. It's the character class. Has the attachments for the head, arms, legs, so on and so on, which I will cover in a future video. It has all the data assets that's used for compatibility and aiding and spawning and loading. So arms, heads, whatever you wear on your head, whatever attaches to whatever you wear on your head, legs, plate carriers and rigs, and our torsos. Then we have the actual attachments themselves. So plate carrier, beacon, hat, and then the remainder of the body parts. Now firearm is set up in the same way, so if I load up the M4, I'll give an example with the attachments, it's already complete, so the M4 itself is just the receivers and the buffer. Now if we click on like the sight, handguard, barrel, charging handle, so on and so on, you can see it's selecting these attachment points over here. Now that is because these are Basically everything that's not this is part of the attachment system. So for sites, basically any spot up here, I want to have the possibility to spawn something from the sites data asset, the 30 millimeter mounts, and the micro dot mounts. That allows me to do things like this. So if I come over here to the sites, let's go to, uh, well, we have the thermal 30 millimeter mount, which by default has an attachment for the optic already set to spawn on it. Same thing with that guy. We have our micro dot offset and our micro dot. So any selection from these, which we can continue to add more and more. So for example, if I really wanted to, I could do, uh, we'll just do a, and we'll just add a handguard there. So now if I click on the sites, uh, scroll down to the bottom, you can see we have a handguard. So, you know, why not put a handguard there, I guess. But anyway, so you get the picture. So from there, we have all of its attachments, well, data assets and the attachments. Pretty straightforward setup, same thing as the character. And then we have our attachment base. So I'll go over the UI in a second. Now this attachment base example is really just a base for all of the attachments to derive from. It's just for the example to make things easier because the only thing that I do is I add this structure here that contains the image and the attachment name that's for the UI. So for example, here we have the image and the attachment name right here. Image, attachment name, so on and so on. That's just to make the UI nice and fancy and kind of show you how you can expand the system really easily. Now it is derived from the provided attachment actor. Now that is not necessary because this system is driven through an interface. It is just easierly set up that way because well, it has everything already implemented for you, as well as I have a Blueprint Functions library that you can use if you want to implement these yourself. That have a lot of the functions kind of already done, like the heavy lifting functions. So you can just call them if you wish. Next up, that uh, little struct that had the image and the uh, attachment name, that was just this little Blueprint structure here. It has a texture 2D and a string, nothing fancy. Then we have our character. So. In the character, we have all of our example movement stuff. We have our mouse wheel up and down. That's just so we can zoom in and out. And we have our right mouse button down. That allows us to actually move. So I can't do anything with middle mouse or left click until I right click and I can pan around. By A and D and Q and E, I can't move. But now if I hold right mouse button, I can. And then up here on begin play, basically what we do is if we're the server, 
we go ahead and spawn the actor of choice. So in this case, by default, we're using the M4. And we set an on rep. Now this on rep is for the UI. So basically, if we're locally controlled, meaning we are the ones that are controlling this character, we go ahead and essentially, if the widget is already up and on the viewport, we go ahead and remove it. Then we, from there, check if the actor, like the M4, is valid that we're trying to access. If it is, we go ahead and get its attachment manager, and we create the widget and go ahead and just add it to the viewport. It's nothing complicated. Then after we spawn the M4, we again make sure we're locally controlled, and that's just so we can set our target arm length of the spring arm component. So that's for our camera here. So basically we can pivot around. I'm selecting something wrong, I guess. We can pivot around the camera, or around our uh, mesh here like so. And then finally, we set our input mode to game and UI, so we can interact with the UI, as well as build a pan around and do stuff in the world itself. And obviously, we make the mouse cursor visible. All right, so that takes care of that. Now let's move on to the, I guess, most important part of this section is the UI. Now, the UI is pretty simple. We have the core, and then at the root of it, we have the W underscore customizer. So this is for everything. Now you see we don't have anything specific for firearm and character, and that is because it actually uses the exact same widget for it. So if I change the actor class to the mannequin character, so we can spawn the mannequin instead, as you can see, everything works in pretty much the exact same manner. It just, just the way it's set up. So like I, you can kind of see I label around often, it's a very generic system. Now, inside of here, we have a horizontal box that basically controls everything. And on the left side, we have our size box that contains our attachment slots widget. Now, this over here is pretty much for our components as well as our attachments themselves. So when I hit play, over here, these are all the components. So if we go ahead and look at the firearm, you can see we have the sight, stock, barrel, handguard, pistol grip, and charging handle. Well, we have all those and, and their sub-attachments here as well. So for example, the handguard has a forward grip and a top rail attachment. Here we have the forward grip, as well as we have the, where is it, the handguard rail right there. So these are all the attachment components. When I click on one of these, such as, what are the forward grip? The forward grip, you can see we now have all the options that go here. So if I wanted to, this also grows and expands. So for example, uh, you can see we end air at the uh, flashlight. So this is our list. If I click the forward grip and I select this guy, which has its own slot. You can see we now have a new one called Picatinny Adapter Attachments. If I click it, we can now add the vertical grip to that attachment, which we couldn't before. So I can replace that back with an angled forward grip or the default like it was. So these are all of the actual attachments themselves that get added. So that's done using a widget switcher. So here you can see the widget switcher. We have two boxes, the scroll box. And inside of that, we have the horizontal box. And that's because on the left-hand side, we have this back button. So when we click in, we can go back and forth. So pretty simple setup. And the way kind of the stuff is loaded is when this is called from the main widget, so W underscore customizer, we go through and we clear out all the components, so the attachment components that are shown in the vertical box, and we iterate through all the ones that we just passed in and basically construct the attachment component widget from that. So all this is, is it just contains the current attachment image, the name of the attachment component, and then the name of the attachment itself if it's there. So for example, here, these are all the default parts that are already on it. So we have the sites, which is the name of the component, the image of the attachment, and the name of the site, or the attachment as well. If I clear this out so we have no site, you can see it just shows it's the site component. It's empty because there's nothing there, and just that guy. So that's how that's pretty much done, relatively straightforward. When you hover it, we just make it pretty much green, nothing more to do. And when we click it, we call on component clicked on the attachment slots. And this is, again, we go back a level. And then when this is clicked, we set it as, okay, this is the component we have selected. Let's go ahead and move our widget switcher from this guy, which lists our components, to 
this guy, which shows all of our attachments. Again, I have some default stuff here just for the sake of visualization. You can ignore it. So from there, we go ahead and clear all the children from the attachments in that list. And we want to go ahead and add an empty one first. So that was that empty attachment that I showed you. So the way to clear it pretty much. And then we loop through all possible attachments that can be done through that slot. So here's where my system comes into play. We have our attachment component. We simply call get possible attachments, iterate through it, and we construct a possible attachment widget. Now this, same thing, contains the image, name of the component, and the name of the attachment. So from here, basically when we click the attachment, we can go ahead and get its class. Once we have its class, we can go ahead and asynchronously load it. And from the uh, W underscore attachment slots, we can call on attachment clicked, which again, loops us right back. And from here, we just go ahead and add the attachment. So if we are passing in an invalid one, which we would when we go to delete something, we instead call destroy current attachment. and That kind of clears it out. But that's the general gist of how most of the visual stuff works. We have uh, two examples for the moving. So for example, we have a slider. And that is done in here, move attachment examples. So here's one with buttons, not quite complete yet, but it is functional. I just need to make it look more visually appealing. And we have that one with the slider. Very simple setup. So for example, when the value changes, we call move attachment. I go ahead and I went ahead and commented everything to try to make it simple. And same deal here. So when you press the forward button, you can go through and, well, we simply move forward a position. Everything else is done for the uh, basically hiding and showing of components. So for example, this light up here, as I overlap it, it hides and unhides. And if I go all the way forwards and release, you can see it's gone permanently. So we're similar to the ground branch. Then lastly, we have a saving and loading widget. And this is our save file. So this basically is just a button that contains the file name. And when you click it, we pass in, or we call on file selected and pass in the file. So this basically tells us, well, tells the system, hey, this is the file we want to load. So in on file selected, we go ahead and dock these. We get the file path, which we already have saved. Well, basically kind of like just cached here. So it's in the saved attachments folder. So saved, saved attachments, and here's all of our current saved stuff. We get the file path, we load the file to a string, make sure it is actually loaded properly first. Then we can simply deserialize it, destroy the current actor, which we would already have, and then spawn the new one. So with the spawning in the new one, we go ahead and we pass in the deserialized attachment, which is done through an interface, which I forgot. But if we go here, find out wherever it is. What's it called? Spawn actor? Yeah, spawn actor. So from here, basically if we have authority, we call spawn constructed actor. And all this does is, again, calls through my functions. So we can pass in the struct, construct attachment parent. If there is no error, then we go ahead and we set the actor to equal what we just spawned. Simple enough. And then we just go ahead and set its transform. So that way it's, you know, in front of us. So that allows us to do well, this. I can go ahead and show you. So let me go ahead and spawn in the mannequin. We make a preset for it. So we'll just make the head red and legs blue. So mannequin example, go ahead and save it. So now if I go ahead and go to the loader, I can load in the M4, it goes through and it loads. I can go back, load in the mannequin example, it goes through and it loads. You know, it's, it, it's a very, I keep saying this, but generic system. I don't know how else to really explain it. But I'll have more videos kind of covering the widget and the UI side of things more in depth, as well as the attachment system as a whole. And eventually we'll get into writing our own UI for a customizer pretty much from scratch. But anyways, this is the video to kind of help you get started, navigate through all the example stuff. And yeah, hopefully by the time you see this, there will be more videos about. So I'll see you in the next one.